Bethesda games like Fallout 3, Skyrim, and Oblivion are absolutely massive, containing both a hefty amount of freedom and technical troubles. Fallout 4, in the most reductive sense, also fits into that description. Its world is dense and sprawling, filled with a seemingly endless amount of fascinating locations, characters, items, and stories to uncover. Yet the game is also guilty of erratic AI, graphical inconsistencies, and frame rate issues. Those who have played Bethesda's previous offerings will have a general idea of what to expect, but it's the details that make Fallout 4 so interesting. Its ability to keep you glued to its world is very powerful. Darting off in a new direction or experimenting with a different style can yield meaningful rewards that feel even richer than the studio's previous efforts. Efforts. More than anything, Fallout 4's surprises are its strongest aspect. There are moments that come out of nowhere and reinvigorate your drive to push forward. You lose your honor, buddy. <laughs> okay then, let's stick together. The story starts just before the bombs fall. After an opening video, you create either a man or woman and get acquainted with your pristine house, complete with a domestic robot named Cosworth. I love you. Both of you. We love you too. Oh my god! It's a serviceable introduction, but pales in comparison to the start of Fallout 3, where you meet quite a few characters and get a solid glimpse of what life is like in an underground vault. You're not given nearly as much time to get a sense of things here, nor is the relationship with your spouse and child as developed as it could be. It gets a lot better, however, once you're free to explore. The bold blue sky feels quite a bit different from the last two Fallout games. There's a lot of gray in the capital wasteland of Fallout 3 and a lot of brown in the Mojave Desert of Fallout New Vegas. The liberal use of color in Fallout 4 makes the world more vibrant, while also accentuating the desolate nature of everything around you. As I live and breathe! Players travel through ruined Boston cities, with buildings ripped up in all sorts of ways. Rusted out cars litter the streets, and mountains of debris clog up neighborhoods. These are not uncommon sights in Fallout, but it's the attention to detail that separates the Commonwealth, where Fallout 4 takes place, from other settings. The 1950s-style advertisements on billboards and posters are humorously enthusiastic, contrasting with the absolute devastation surrounding them. Crumbling neon signs and proud historic statues serve as reminders of a time gone by, creating vistas both striking and sad. The aesthetic prevents a sensation of sameness from settling in. The various parts of the world all feel very different from one another. You'll travel through fields of dead grass and trees with rabid dogs and disgusting mole rats. Raiders and brutish super mutants reside in crude wooden outposts. As you get closer to the fringe, things get stranger. The air becomes murky and green, the ground scorched, and a never-ending storm rages all around. The hindered visibility makes the enormous rad scorpions that burst from the ground and the vicious reptilian death claws even more terrifying. There's simply so much to see that aimless wandering is just as fulfilling as chasing down objectives. Those with nomadic tendencies are further rewarded by legendary enemies, randomly appearing creatures that are more resilient and appear more frequently at higher difficulties. Each legendary enemy drops a unique piece of gear, making it worth the resources required to take them down. We find ourselves chasing them whenever possible, our minds running wild with hopes for what they could drop. The one annoyance is that almost always after severely wounding a legendary enemy, their health refills, with the game indicating they've mutated. It's a weak and frustrating method of having legendary enemies seem tougher than they are, and robs a bit of the joy from fights. The stories you frequently get wrapped up in are even more compelling than the lust for loot. And by stories, we don't mean the main narrative, but the various events, both big and small, affecting the inhabitants of the wasteland. You may run through a ravaged town and hear a woman cry for help, only to fall right into a raider trap. Poking into a building might reward you with the charming tale of love blossoming between a robot with a French accent and a middle-aged school teacher. An offhand conversation could point you toward a secret trail, which leads to decoding a password and discovering an organization you're free to team up with. The 13 recruitable companions have their own elaborate stories to tell, but only if you put in the effort to find them, travel with them, and pay attention to what they like and don't like. Hey boy, you know any tricks? <laughs> What's so effective about these moments is the game doesn't always get in your face about them. They're not always quests, and there's not always loot to be had. Sometimes, these stories simply exist for the sake of it, enriching the world and inflating your curiosity. Fallout 4 revels in the unexpected, unleashing its most impressive moments at surprising times. Other Bethesda games have accomplished this as well, but to a lesser degree. Almost everything in Fallout 4 feels more carefully crafted and stuffed with intrigue than the games that came before it. Yeah. 
While chance encounters are a huge part of the appeal, the central story has excellent aspects as well, most notably the decisions you get to make. Depending on how you build your character, you'll be able to shape the world in powerful ways, deciding the fate of important characters and entire groups of people. Each of the four factions has their own idea of how the world should prosper, and even if it involves heartless methods, they provide convincing arguments. That said, certain revelations in the main story feel abrupt and unearned. A few sections that meant to hit the hardest didn't resonate nearly as much as some of the smaller quests. Although there are spectacular sequences, the main story is ultimately not what will stick with us. Cambridge has one hell of a new pothole. <laughs> How you interact with others has substantially changed from previous Fallout games. For one thing, the player character has a voice. We had our reservations coming in, worried the voice would distract us from conversations rather than enhance them. Fortunately, both the male and female performances are spot on, lending the appropriate amount of emotion and applying the distinct humor of the series when needed. What actually distracts is the new dialogue system. Instead of a box with a variety of choices, players are limited to four options at a time. Once a decision is made, you're only occasionally allowed to go back and gather more intel. It seems like the desire was to speed up conversations, condensing them to a format that feels more natural than offering a large list, but it just comes across as limiting. Fallout 4 puts so much effort into its world that it's easy to want to dig in as much as possible, especially when previous games let you do so. What's worse is how dialogue options are phrased. Most options are just a word or two, leading to instances where you don't know exactly what you're going to say. For example, you're often given the option to be sarcastic, but that's all it says. These phrases are sometimes amusing, but other times, the character completely missed our intent. How many different ways do you need me to say yes? Even with the severely scaled back approach, characters will have plenty of entertaining things to say. While the new system is bothersome, it never truly deterred us from engaging with others. Plus, some of the old Fallout magic is present in other ways. Those with high charisma can convince people to pay them more, open up a sealed off location, or completely prevent violence. 70-30 seems more like it. The man's not your welcome mat. Yeah. Whatever. Although skills and the karma system aren't present in Fallout 4, the revamped perks are so valuable and numerous that there isn't a lack of options when it comes to enhancing your wanderer. Old standbys like lockpicking and terminal hacking are as essential as they've always been, opening avenues that otherwise wouldn't be available. New perks, such as the ability to construct the best weapon mods, are just as enticing. We spent far too long agonizing over what to select, deciding on something, and then immediately changing our mind, which is always a great problem to have in an RPG. <laughs> Combat has also been overhauled for the better. The shooting in Fallout 3 and New Vegas is horribly clumsy, as though the games are approximating what it's like to fire a gun without actually giving you the sensation. Not so in Fallout 4. Each of the weapons has a weight and kick to them and makes encounters feel like real firefights. The feedback is not as strong as games built around nothing but shooting, but it's a huge step forward. Both the first-person and third-person perspectives are much more enjoyable to use than in past games, though we found ourselves preferring first-person since the third-person camera doesn't always provide an optimal view of the action. This is the urge of the super mutant! VATS, the targeting system introduced in Fallout 3, makes a return, and being able to pinpoint enemy body parts is just as useful as ever. Sniping the legs off a charging feral ghoul or clipping a blood bug's wings can easily swing fights in your favor. What's different is that, unlike before, time doesn't completely freeze when using VATS. It only slows down, so you're still very much at risk. It's a smart choice, since our memories of Fallout 3 and New Vegas involve a lot of overly relying on the system and feeling far too safe as a result. Additionally, it seems like Fallout 4 throws a lot more enemies at the player, and many of them are relentlessly aggressive. We made it through some engagements by the skin of our teeth, dealing with kamikaze super mutants, their irradiated hounds, and a pack of raiders all at once. Every single gun can be tweaked with weapon modifications, allowing for an overwhelming amount of customization. Players can affix a long-range scope to a pistol or alter the firing rate of a laser rifle. To build these modifications, you have to seek out the proper materials found on everyday objects like toys, kitchenware, and cleaning supplies. Bethesda games have always had mundane items, but they usually have little value or purpose. In Fallout 4, they actually mean something, to the point where finding a circuit board is just as exciting, if not more, than snagging a new piece of equipment. Armor can also be modified, including the iconic power armor, which now acts like a temporary vehicle that runs on fusion cells. Rolling across the wasteland in a suit of steel tuned exactly how you want is an empowering feeling, one that's even better if you bring along a minigun or portable nuclear launcher.
Resources are used in more than just modifications, playing a crucial role in settlements as well. Settlements give players the freedom to furnish and decorate structures built from the ground up, as long as they've got the materials to support them. Being able to make your own house offers a sense of ownership that not many modern single-player RPGs provide. Those that don't care about such customization can largely ignore settlements with zero repercussions. If only settlement tools were easier to work with. The game gives little explanation on how it all functions, especially with a few of the finer details, leading to moments where you dig through menus and experiment only to get frustrated when things don't work. Even when they do work, the whole system is cumbersome, with pieces refusing to snap together or move in ways you want them to. It's possible to build some impressive creations, but you'll need a lot of patience. With the right perks, players can craft trading outposts and establish supply lines between settlements. The higher level shops offer some of the strongest weapons, armor, and items in the game. As a trade-off, settlements can get attacked, leaving you responsible for building a proper defense. The most disheartening thing about Fallout 4 is that its technical issues are frequent and severe. Many characters, especially the lesser ones, look like cheap plastic dolls, lacking the detail present in other aspects of the game. It doesn't help that their animations are just as awful. They often move around like puppets on strings. Most of the lip syncing is like a bad dub, with mouths not even remotely resembling the words being said. The frame rate can noticeably dip, which is especially aggravating during large outdoor firefights where you're struggling to survive. All of these technical complaints come from our experience with the PlayStation 4 version of the game, the primary platform for the review. We haven't spent sufficient time with other versions to properly compare their performance. <laughs> For the last decade, Bethesda games have had similar issues, and it's getting harder to forgive. Somehow, in spite of everything, Fallout 4 consumed us. When we're not wandering the wastes, it overwhelms our thoughts as we ponder where to go, which faction to pursue, and what weapon to try next. Fallout 4 is flawed in very serious ways, but playing it is the only thing we want to do.